Hello, uh, my name is um, Greg Gorski. I'm representing uh, my uh, private profile called AirSafe Design, uh, which I used for my ar 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 architectural activities, natural building and stuff. But uh, uh, this uh, today I, wa I would like to uh, interview uh, Amelia Cole. Uh, and ask her uh, a few questions about the uh, current situation with the pandemic uh, going on and the lockdown and new uh, rules being uh, enforced uh, by the British government. So, uh, hi Emilia. Hi Greg. Um, uh, first question. Um, uh, do you think the lockdown was a correct decision of the government? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. Um, but I think it was a very difficult decision because whichever way uh, it was decided, it would always be um, criticized. You know, if we obviously didn't have the lockdown and many people um, were affected or died, then obviously uh, there would be a huge responsibility and criticism towards the government. Um, so now we have the lockdown and I think um, a lot of people are going to experience um, very severe economic hardships in the future. At the moment, um, people are paid and you know wages being paid and self-employed people being paid but it's only for the moment but I think uh, small uh, small businesses uh, you know the the um, uh, the, the uh, catering industry entertainment all these businesses uh, could possibly be very severely affected and um, yeah people are going to be very economically um, kind of um, disabled uh, by the lockdown so I don't think it's a good thing um, and I don't think that the so-called pandemic in inverted commas I don't think there was enough justification to really do that and uh, do you think that uh, they should uh, also come with the plan of coming out of lockdown before they actually uh, uh, implemented it? I think, in my opinion, obviously it's only just my opinion, uh, more, uh, more should have been done to really get different opinions from different um, health bodies and in fact only uh, certain uh, advisors uh, were consulted uh, like Royal London College, uh, which is uh, known to be funded by Bill Gates. Um, the, the, uh, the, the health um, minister also has vested interest in um, uh, vaccination industry. So obviously the decision uh, which have been made uh, are, are not very clear why they have made these decisions and I think more independent health bodies should have been consulted um, and looked at, um, you know, of different possibilities. So that's what I. Um, uh, uh, since uh, last Wednesday, we have new rules. Uh, are you familiar with the new rules of uh, lockdown? Uh, can you remind me? Well, uh, you can be outside, yes. <laughs> yes, you can be outside. You more, can more than one time a so day. So <laughs> that's why we are having this interview because we are allowed to meet uh, a per one person from the other a household, yes. and uh, it doesn't need to be connected to sport activities. Um, but we obviously need to keep uh, uh, social distancing rules and some people can go to work if they cannot go uh, work from home uh, but other than that uh, I think the, the, the previous rules are still in place so I think it's very good obviously it's a step in the right direction um, I think that the main impact of the lockdown and social distancing 
is psychological. You know, that people feel uncomfortable coming close to one another. And just imagine, you know, what sort of psychological um, impact that's going to have. That instead of, you know, natural sort of um, pull towards one another, towards helping one another, to towards supporting one another, every time you've got to think, you know, I can't come close to, I can't visit them. So I think it's a step in the right direction, but I hope there's not going to be, that this stage is not going to be uh, for too long that we'll move to a, a next stage. Uh, but unfortunately, I fear that, you know, if government, um, you know, has got the plan to really affect the society even further, they might come up with a, a second wave, which, um, you know, which, which possibly might not be, you know, e even uh, something which is true or, or justifiable and locked us down again. So um, it would be good to have a more kind of open and transparent um, view of, you know, what's really going on with the, you know, with the um, people who've been affected. Are these numbers are true numbers or not? Um, and so on and so forth. So I understand you, you don't agree with how they uh, attach then the numbers of death to COVID? Uh. Well, it's been very clear that um, doctors have been under pressure to uh, put on a death certificate uh, COVID-19, although uh, no proof of that has been kind of attached to it. So. Um, uh, so people who actually died from other causes like heart attacks um, but at the same time uh, tested positive for COVID-19 had a uh, diagnosis of, or, or, or cause of this put down as a COVID-19. Uh, so there's been a lot of misinformation and even in the United States <laughs> people who actually died in car accidents uh, <laughs> been diagnosed with um, cause of death of COVID-19. So uh, I'm not just talking about misinformation, I'm just talking about blatant lies by, uh, you know, by, you know, by the, the, the uh, whoever was, you know, was responsible. Um, okay. Um, do you think that a people movement should be restricted uh, by law? until the vaccination is developed? Well, I'm not a, someone who really understands British law that well. I only know a little bit. But according to what I've heard and how I am understood it, there's no such law uh, in, um, you know, in Britain which, will for, which would make people stay at home. You cannot have such law. So, you know, the, the government, by passing a bill in a government, he makes a recommendation. But that recommendation can be enforced or, or uh, applied uh, through, obviously, uh, you know, like police and so on and so on. But there cannot be ever such law to actually lock people up at home and say, no, you can't leave. Um, it's... Uh, um, you know, that, that's that's my understanding yeah, of the they, law. Yeah, they cannot do this, but they can uh, threat people by fining them. Yeah. So the, one of the, the, the new things uh, in the new lockdown law is that if you break the uh, lockdown rules, first time you get a fine worth a thousand yeah. pounds, the yeah. next time you get 200, the third time you get 400, the f um, Four times you get, and so on until three thousand two hundred, which is the maximum yeah. penalty. Well, the, the thing is that most people, kind of, when they get the fine, they obviously think, "Oh, yeah, well, I've done something bad. I've, you know, better pay it." But in fact, the only uh, body which is um, kind of um, appointed to enforce the law is the the law courts. So, you know, you can actually go to the court and contest the, you know, the fine. 
So um, I think today or yesterday I've heard on the news that apparently all those people who um, who kind of um, contested mo most of the uh, fines uh, given during the um, the lockdown actually been contested and been found of um, that been given unjustly. So obviously people. Uh, you know, people know the law a little bit, so it's it's worth checking. Uh, you know, wh whether actually, um, you know, um, you're liable to pay that fine. Uh, okay, and um, so coming back to the vaccinations, uh, what are what are you your thought of it? Uh, do you think the vaccination should be a mandatory to protect the whole population of the globe? Well, I think the um, the assumption is to protect you say, yourself. So we we actually assuming that the vaccination is is going to protect, but it's only an assumption. I mean, when you look at the history of vaccination, even at the time when it was invented, um, it was you know it was stated that it's not hundred percent that there are side effects that doesn't always work. Um, uh, that it's not safe. So, and then you, when you look at the history of vaccinations, um, th there's been, um, you know, um, a great number of people who suffered from the sort of side effects of, of vaccination. So, it doesn't always protect. So, we, we make that assumption, but I think, you know, that the fact that people are, are kind of made to believe that the only way to help is through accepting the vaccination. It's a false premises. Um, I think the, you know, um, the, there should be more kind of inquiry into the history of mice vaccinations, in, into, um, you know, um, into the, the cases of uh, people who brought the, uh, the companies producing vaccinations to courts and uh, you know demanded obviously compensations so I think anything mandatory I, I've never been in favor of uh, mandatory medicine I think it should be there available if people want it and and feel that you know that is good for them but should never be mandatory because that makes the system very um, fascistic in a way yeah Okay, well, yeah. what if... You can't escape, you know, even if you dis disagree, you know, it's like a... Yeah, what, what yeah. if they are not mandatory, but if you don't get vaccinated, you don't have the same rights as those people who get vaccinated, like uh, you have the traveling restrictions, you cannot go to, to certain shops because... Well, I, I would also object to that, I would object to that, because um, in a way... Um, there the are lots of people who, for other reasons, uh, reject. I mean, supposedly that even, um, you know, you accept that, you know, it's available for everyone and so on and so forth. But there are people who object to vac vaccinations for religious re reasons, uh, people who might be allergic to ingredients and so on and so forth. So would that mean that those people cannot travel they cannot participate in the society in a meaningful way so i feel that um, we make too big a thing of the vaccination and somehow it's very convenient at the moment with the covid um, in, you know sort of pandemic or epidemic to actually uh, put that pressure from the um, you know, uh, from the manufacturers to make incredible um, amount of money from sales of vaccinations and tests. So very, very much connected with the profit-making big pharma. So I would be very suspicious of that. Do you think that it applies also to uh, an, uh, ideas of introducing uh, movement tracking apps? Uh, do you think they can actually uh, help in fighting the spread of coronavirus or they are also made to to profit some some individuals 
I think it's a great threat to privacy. I mean, even without the virus, I mean, why should we be trapped? Why should intelligence community have access to all your movements and, you know, all the information connected to you? Um, there's no need for it. Uh, so, but then, you know, if you consider it bringing the apps, then, you know, you can, tr you know, tr track the, you know, the contacts you had and so on and so forth. Um, I think if people really want to have that, you know, I won't be the one who will stop them. But I think a lot of people you find that will object to that. And there's a lot of people who don't even have mobile phones in UK. Um, I'm not sure if I remember the, the correct uh, number, but it's, it's like close to 30% of people don't have even the, the, the mobile. So what would you do? make them buy mobile phones, make them use them, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a great question, yes. So, I, I, don't, I don't think um, one should feel that, uh, you know, you've got to uh, comply with the techno technological advanced uh, sort of systems uh, just for the sake of the, you know, saving your life, because I, I don't think it works, you know, saving your life uh, or pre preventing the disease is something more ma natural, being healthy, you know, eating well, um, uh, you know, having a balanced lifestyle, having the, the, the right natural medication, you know, that is preventing the illness. I mean, the app is not going to do that. So. Yeah. So how, how did you react to the message from the government uh, when they uh, sent message to everyone stay home be uh, hel help us save lives and save NHS you, you must have received one of these messages w w didn't you ask yourself ah oh, how come do they have my number uh, I don't use my telephone very often to be honest I don't my, use my mobile uh -huh. But I used. I think that there was there was a message on the on the tablet. Um, I kind of thought, well, we, we already knew what the message was, so they didn't need to send it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, you couldn't avoid. You know, if you wanted to avoid hearing it, yeah. um, I I thought it was psychological. You know, it looks like a good thing. It looks like okay. You know, it, it's going to work. But, you know, when you look at what happened later, it didn't actually flatten the curve. You know, it didn't, you know, according to, you know, government sources of this, you know, the death rate, it didn't really flatten the curve. So, um, you know, whether, whether you believe in numbers of, of dead or not. But so I, I felt it was a strange exercise in, in almost like, breaking down the communities into you know into kind of some kind of martial law where, where people kind of sit frightened at home I really I didn't obviously I you know I I kind of partially observed it but I kept going out and uh, and meeting people you know observing the you know two meters distance but I, I didn't feel it was very helpful at all I just saw the whole community breaking down into this kind of like a scared prisoners yeah. <laughs> sitting at home yes <laughs> yes well what do you think in in, in uk i think we we, we had this uh, light version of the lockdown i think and yeah. especially in our community when we could still uh, go to our allotment and do some gardening yeah. and meet uh, people who, who did the same thing but in uh, in countries like uh, Poland or Romania they uh, reinforce the law quite uh, tough strictly, so yeah. strictly mm -hmm. and they they gave a lot of fines and they they were strict about people on the quarantine really like turning quarantine into home arrest really yeah yeah it, it felt like that and i felt really sorry i mean i'm a meditator you know i really i know how to be alone i i, I know how to you know 
stay in isolation for a long time. But not everyone is like that. And I felt really sorry for older people who were virtually sort of like left alone in their rooms for days on end mm -hmm. um, and, and not being able to see the, you know, the families. And some of them, you know, really gone down the hill and, and um, just recently met someone on the allotment and he said that the family kind of insisted to see their relative in one of those homes and she was virtually like going down the hill so rapidly from isolation so but they took her home and you know within days she kind of started recovering and started cooking for herself and and being quite happy so I, I think it you know the the effect of pushing people into this um, lockdown is very negative for, for the mind and body as well mm -hmm. I mean I can understand the quarantine when actually someone had a contact and you know display some uh, symptoms you can understand that person going into quarantine but to quarantine healthy people for, for two months children all the people uh, you know in in some sometimes very small confined spaces like, it seems quite cruel yeah not only cruel but it it, it can be a cause of death on its yeah. own yes uh, not to mention that some of these people have already uh, existing uh, health conditions that they cannot treat because they have no access to uh, the medical treatment so uh, I think that not the, not only the COVID would be a cause of a lot of deaths, but the lockdown on, on its own would generate e even much more deaths. More, more alcohol uh, sort of related illnesses, because I can see people just going down to the shops, you know, in my area, and you can see they're just kind of like, just waiting for another, you know, bunch of alcohol to, to consume in their own on their own in their rooms it's it's not a very good situation i think it's got to stop you know my message is you know it's got to stop so how, how do you see it how do we get out of lockdown um i don't think government should be should be so powerful to impose such law i think you know they should be like um like a judicial um, kind of inquiry into the the workings of the government. I think there should be some kind of mechanisms to really stop that. I don't think that you know the government sh you know should have such power to really make the whole population stay at home. I think it's just incredibly scary that they can do that. I think it should be voluntary. People feel vulnerable, you know. I'm, you know, I'm old, older, or you know, maybe they could, you know, conduct their life, that, you know, in relative, more relative isolation. They really feel that, but it should be totally voluntary. It should not be imposed by the government ever. That's how I feel. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with it. We can see it from the Sweden. Yeah, it's the Sweden model is a good example. Yeah, well, apparently if they applied lockdown and if if they they use the same uh, mo computer generated model for uh, how many uh, COVID victims would be uh, without uh, a lockdown, then they would have probably 10 times more death than they have at the moment yeah. without uh, applying lockdown. Well, the interesting thing about the, the COVID, you know, in some of the um, communities in America amongst the, um, the people who were um, homeless and stayed outside most of them, there, there were no cases of COVID. Mm. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so... Yeah. Um, you know, and they're very close together and... <laughs> so, uh, I would like to ask you, what's your opinion? Uh, do, you, do you have any thoughts 
about how this virus originated? Well, I only know what obviously I read and heard, um, but I know I've, I've seen the uh, the patent for it. So that it's it's been patented in America and in in Europe. So obviously they had this virus. Um, one of the places they pointed out to, uh, well, it, it points to is the um, uh, the um, lab in North Carolina, and one of the members of the lab was. Um, was from China and apparently he you know he might have taken the, the research because the, there were some problems with the you know with the research in in America so they also simultaneously were conducting some research in uh, um, in the labs in in China uh, it certainly has not come from the bat I mean everyone agrees that this type of um, virus would take like millennia to develop naturally so it's not developed naturally it's been taken um, you know from the sort of ordinary um, kind of uh, cold, cold virus and it's been spiked genetically uh, with, with some other sort of bits and pieces and one of them was uh, um, you know kind of like a um, genetic material from AIDS and, and SARS and what, whatever so obviously it's been created in the lab um, and um, but then it's very uncertain you know the, the route how it's found its way into the public whether you know it was brought by someone spread about because one of the places which really was very affected was Iran wasn't it so why was Iran affected? You know, was there a, some kind of political agenda behind it? So uh, we don't know. Obviously, it, it, it was China was affected, but we, you know, we don't know whether the information which comes from China is, is so lot reliable anyway. So then it spread. But I have, um, you know, a firm convi a conviction that it obviously was worked on looked at and um, um, kind of developed in the lab so and I think all, all the other um, scientists from other countries like Greece and uh, in India kind of agree with that that was a, a lab created um, uh, thing okay so how how do you feel uh, hearing about uh, big media corporations like uh, uh, YouTube or Facebook, Twitter, blocking uh, people speaking uh, openly about these uh, alternative facts, like the the COVID, it's not uh, uh, coming from the original uh, yeah. natural I think, sources. I think it's it's obviously quite bad that it happens because it's you know it's an assault on free speech. But it's not very clever on their part either, because more you suppress it, then more people really want to reach out and seek for the true information, isn't it? It's natural, you know, if you say no, you just want to go and get it. Yeah. <laughs> so yes. um, so I, I don't know why they're doing it, how they're doing it. Obviously, they thinking that they will succeed. And I think, you know, if you look at the power of, um, technology it's possible that you can succeed because look at China I mean China is completely dominated by censorship uh, to that extent that um, you know I was told that uh, do you remember that there was this um, there were these incidents on at Tiananmen Square I don't know you, do you remember which year it was but mm. apparently in China now, no one knows about Tiananmen Square. So it's possible to wipe out the whole memory of incident, of, of, uh, of the whole sort of thing uh, from the yeah. consciousness of the nation. It's called the Ma Mandala Effect. Yeah, so um, it, it, it is very strange, but I think China is China and that's why we're fighting against the, 
you know the Chinese system being brought to to the West against the you know the 5G and highway because we don't want this to happen here. So we have a very different history in in Europe and in America of free speech. We remember what it was like, and you know even if they st try to steer us towards heavy duty censorship. I don't think people are going to take it lying down. I think people are going to really object to it. So hopefully um, more and more people are awake to you know what's been happening and pass on the information, share the information. Obviously there is also you know there's also a lot of misinformation uh, you know and, and kind of cooked up stories but I think you know, when you consider everything, everyone would know the truth, you know, when, when, they, when they're confronted with it. Uh, and, and I think at the moment people don't feel comfortable with the main media. Uh, no matter how, you know, I, I've, I've met um, an older lady at the bus stop and just started chatting to her. She, she, she's Irish and she said, you know what she said to me? And I thought she would be like talking about what she heard on the media. She said, you know what? Governments are corpor corporations now. And police is the same, she said, it's a corporation. <laughs> People make up their own minds, yes? Even if yeah. they don't have the access to the media. So it's incredible. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Emilia, very for welcome. the interview. I it was pleasure. Channel grows in strength and membership so well i hope to, to you. we are going to fight for the <laughs> freedom of speech <laughs> at Fantastic. least so we can express our opinions without yeah. being deleted yes <laughs> okay thank well, you it was a pleasure thank you thank you yeah. good luck to you thank you